Hi, and you join me once again on the Peugeot THP150 or the EP6 engine. And what I'll be doing today is removing the four fuel injectors which are mounted on the fuel rail and also the high pressure fuel pump mounted on the side of the engine. Now this engine is also fitted in the Mini and I believe it's under the, the number N12, N13 or N14. So hopefully this will help you if you need to work on the fuel injection system of this engine. And as always, have a good weekend. Okay, so we'll start by removing the fuel injectors. So we've got a couple of pipes here that we need to remove. So I've actually color coded these. So the blue one is the low pressure fuel to the high pressure fuel pump. And the yellow one goes to the purge canister valve. So we just unclip these pipes off there. Now this pipe, you do need to be very careful here. I thought you had to sort of prise this off and you don't. You basically, you've got two wings there and you need to just open those wings at the bottom and the fuel pipe will actually come off. If you do what I do, it will obviously break and then you've actually got a problem because that's now not gonna secure back onto the fuel pump. So I'll demonstrate that a little bit more in some more detail in a moment. But anyway, so once the pipe's off, you do need to cap the fuel inlet pipe because obviously if you get anything in there, it could be absolutely disastrous. So let's just unclip the electrical connector then from the purge canister valve, like so. Let's just lift up and pop off problem with a lot of this plastic is it, it does go brittle with the heat and the from the engine and the hot and cold cycles it constantly endures so there we are that's those pipes now basically free and we can pop those to one side so like I say I'll show a little bit more detail now on that clip um, so here it is so it's two sides to it so basically you need to sort of lift it on both sides it's actually very awkward so that's one side up and then you need to do the same on the other side just try and, and obviously don't lift it too high or you'll risk snapping it they must have a special team that just invent all these little plastic connectors and clips because every single one's always different so there it is. So it's slightly conical on the one side. So it sort of goes over the ridge. But anyway, so hopefully that gives you a bit of a heads up on that so you don't do the same mistake I did. So then we've also got to disconnect the oil sump level sensor. Because obviously I'm taking this wiring loom off the back of the engine. So that's that one. I'll try and show all the wires so you can see in case you come to refit it all. And then it's a 13 millimeter socket for the starter motor. So this starter motor has been sitting here for quite a while now. We'll get this out of the way. Always worth putting the little nut back on so you don't lose that. And then just pop the low power connector off like so. So that's that whole wiring harness out of the way now. Again, I'll just quickly demonstrate the electrical connector on the end there so you can see what it looks like. And then we'll get this starter motor out of the way. So we've also got the crank shaft top dead center sensor that also needs to be unclipped. So that's how that goes on. Lift the little plastic frame away. And then we can just unclip the the crank sensor. Crank sensor? Crank sensor. And that's like that. So that part of the wiring is then obviously clipped into the body of the engine so you need to use perhaps some um, what they call these tools 
panel panel removal tools. So you can just pull that wiring loom away like so. And then we've also got the knock sensor. So we'll just get that out of the way. I should have removed that starter motor first so that the camera could have got a better view. And there's the colour of the wires there going to that. So we're starting to gradually peel everything off this engine before we start looking at the actual inside of the engine. There's the starter motor. We've eventually got that out of the way now. So that's what that all looks like. Okay, so... Now we'll just undo the connector to the variable valve timing solenoid which also had something quite interesting about it because I noticed it actually wasn't bolted in. I don't know why the, the tab was had been pushed to the side. So whether they missed it accidentally when they put this back together or something, I don't know. But also when we pull this out, we do seem to have a lot of swarf and debris there on those very fine gauze filters so that is not a good sign so this engine isn't looking healthy but interesting just come across that while dissecting all this engine okay so now to remove the electrical connector from the fuel rail high pressure sensor Right, so that's got three wires on it, that one. And then we've also got the four connectors now that go to the actual injectors themselves. So those are just to squeeze and pull off. All the colours are actually the same there orange and white. We'll just get those four off. It'll be quite interesting to see inside this engine see what actually happened because I'm pretty sure we've got pistons and valves that hit each other um, as the vacuum pump seized and then that pushed the timing out is what I'm predicting. So I'm quite intrigued to see what has actually happened inside this engine. Okay, so that's most of the wiring loom now completely away. So we've just got one here that's going to the high pressure fuel pump. That actually says BMW on it. Okay, so that's the connector there. And then we need to move on to actually removing the fuel pipe from the high pressure pump to the the rail. So that's a 12 millimeter spanner. We can just undo that. I'm using one of those brake spanners there because it, it goes all the way around. Quite ideal for things like this. And then again it's a 12 millimeter for this one. When you come to tighten these up it's about 30 newton meters. So we've still got fuel in here from all this time. And it's been sat there for like a couple of years now. Okay, so then we can move on to actually removing the fuel injector rail. So that's a Torx 45 for the four screws. And then when you come to retighten those, it'll be 20 newton meters. I'm using a different tool there because that's just a bit easier to get in there because it is quite a narrow space. So you might find a bit easier than ones with the sockets on. There we are, so that's those out. And then what you need to very carefully do is lift the injector rail out and the injectors will come with it. 
like so. So there they are. So all this part is rather expensive. So definitely don't want to knock anything, drop anything. These are like one of the most expensive parts of the engine and that fuel pump. Okay, so once we take that off, we're very wise to just cover the fuel outlet there. So again, you don't get anything in there. And now we can move on to actually removing the high pressure fuel pump itself. So for that, it's a Torx 30 for the three screws. And there is actually a particular order to these screws when tightening it up. So I'll add a picture up here now so you can see the sequence. So I should have probably undone this in the reverse sequence. But I wasn't aware that there was a sequence at the time. So this is driven from the camshaft. So this would be the inlet camshaft that's driving this fuel pump. And be careful when you pull it out. The chrome plating on this Ooh. can cut you. So I was very nervous of the chrome plating. So be quite careful with that. It's, it's really sharp and it will go straight into your skin. So you might want to wear gloves actually when you do that. So there we are. So it's sort of similar drive to the vacuum pump. Okay, so we've got quite a bit off this engine now. I think next week will probably be the turbo perhaps. So we'll have a quick look in there. So yeah, there's the inlet camshaft. Like so. Okay, so we'll conclude the video with some talk and other information, which you can pause to view for longer. And as always, some reference photographs, which again, you can pause to view for longer. So this video covered the removal of the fuel injectors and fuel pump on a Peugeot EP6 or THP150 engine and the BMW N12, N13 and N14 engine. Thank you for watching and please like and subscribe to help support this channel. The video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in December 2023 and I can also be found on Instagram, Facebook and X as Coats and Gators.